In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In this Sunday's Gospel, we hear of the seed that falls on good soil, and it produces up to a hundredfold, a remarkable harvest from just one little seed. The good soil, of course, is the soil of faith and prayer. And no more profound prayer is there than the Eucharistic celebration. Whether you receive in person or spiritually, the gifts of the Lord in the Eucharist, enliven and enrich us, and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and to ask God for pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are splendor of the Father and Word made flesh. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Justice from the heavens, the rain and snow come down, and do not return there, till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows, and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it 
in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now, and not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, to you, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea. Such a large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke at length to them in parables, saying, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty-fold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the youngest of, of eight children in a family, so as the youngest, you're often the punchline of many a joke. So when I was about six years old, some of my older brothers and I planted a little small vegetable garden in the same yard, or they helped me do it. We planted seeds and put it in. We did that in the morning, and about four in the afternoon, I came to check, and where we had planted carrot seeds was an entire row of carrots. What I failed to notice that there was no green parts on top of the carrots. It was just carrots that they had taken from the refrigerator and put down not being the most astute farmer, I was overjoyed to think that we had sprouted a garden in so quick a time, until I turned around and realized that they were howling with laughter. I learned at that very time, first of all, that I probably didn't want to be a farmer for a living, but also that growing things takes time. This is the lesson that we see. The, the, the sower scatters the seeds, but they don't sprout up immediately. It's that the kingdom of God takes time. Just think about the rescue plan that God formed in Jesus Christ. He started from the fall, but it wasn't like it happened a week later. We went through the formation of the people of God under Abraham and through the patriarchs, all the way through the kings and the prophets. God led his people into Egypt and then out into freedom, all to lead us and prepare us for the coming of the Christ. It takes time for the kingdom of God to manifest itself. And so it is that when we are in the process of letting the seed nurture in our lives, 
We often want things to happen immediately. We want things to, to grow. But the Lord wants to do them in his own way. Just like a seed that needs to die, some parts of us need to die before we can blossom more fully. And so it is that if we find ourselves in periods of, of dryness, of periods of doubt, of periods of where we're not feeling the love of God, we need to trust that the sower is working his work in us. And so if you find yourself doubting, then we make an act of faith. Let me explain. Think of a, um, any married couple. There are times in their lives when they will feel more in love, but then there are times where they feel less in love. It's at those times where they decide to love. They make an act of love to see themselves through a storm. And so it is that we make acts of faith when things are confusing or difficult or dry to say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief because I know you are the sower. When I am feeling hopeless, I'm starting to despair, then I say, Lord, no, no, I trust that you are the sower who are going to bring this. I hope, but help my lack of hope. Help my hopelessness. Fill it up. So it is that we remember that carrots don't grow in a day and neither does a kingdom in just a few centuries. But God is the sower and will always reap a rich harvest. And so it is that we trust, whether it's a beautiful sunny day or cloudy, to make an act of faith, an act of love, an act of hope, because the sower sows always good seed. Praise be Jesus Christ. The profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial to the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. My brothers and sisters, Jesus tells us that faith is like a seed, which fully grows when it falls on rich soil. We make our prayers to God our Father, asking that he will prepare us and all his children to be open to his word. For a growth of faith in our communities suffering from injustice, may every experience of sorrow be a means of deepening our faith and commitment to the person of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those influencing the world's economy, may they always be conscious of the world's hungry and seek to help the most vulnerable in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to life within the sacrament of marriage and an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent diaconate, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those throughout the world suffering from the effects of the coronavirus, May they be given healing and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you give us the gift of faith, and we pray for your spirit to increase it in us day by day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord. accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of the whole church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, and as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonders to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to just say a word to all those who are homebound. You may have been used to being busy in your parish in many ways, and now you are not able to do so. Now you have the most important ministry of your parish, and that's to pray to pray for their parish, for your priests, and for our seminarians. This is Gerard Gayu for the Archdiocese of Washington at St. John. So say a special prayer for him and for all the seminarians this day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.
If you cannot attend Mass and would like to receive the Eucharist at home, please contact your parish directly. To help support the TV Mass from the Basilica, call 1-866-507-8757 or visit faithdirect.net slash basilica tv mass. Everything changed from that moment I found out I was pregnant. Without the Knights of Columbus donating these ultrasounds to the Women's Care Center, I don't think I would have ever have kept my son. I wanted to either put him up for adoption or I was either going to have an abortion. I was still in high school. I was so scared. I was so nervous. But when I saw him, my baby on the ultrasound, and I heard his heartbeat. I remember just falling in love with, it was a tiny little peanut. That's when I'm like, I, I wanna keep him. This is my child. So I'm very grateful for getting the opportunity to have and see my son and just that changed my life completely. Thank you, Knights of Columbus.